my I have to do the intro again. Yo, Carlitos, thank you for the follow, homie. Okay, so it's showing we're dude. This is so messed up. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> All right, so we should be live now on my account. So I just did a live stream. I don't know what the heck happened, but it wasn't letting me basically do anything. So, if this is working now, welcome to the stream, guys. It's going to be how to make coins on the bronze pack method. You've been using this. I know it. If you haven't, you're missing out. I'm going to show you how to do it. FIFA 20. And kind of talking about how it's going to be different in FIFA 21 with them saying there's going to be no fitness cards. How you could still potentially make coins. Whether it's going to be more players they put into packs or what. We're going to kind of discuss this stuff. Have a good time. Relax. And make coins while also making packs. So that later this week. Hopefully by the end of the weekend, we can have a pack opening video for you guys for like the 82, five pluses, things like that. So sit back, relax. My other intro is a lot better. James, what's up, buddy? Um, <laughs> is this FIFA? Alan, it is FIFA, man. Um, again, I did you guys get a notification that I was live before this? Because li literally it wasn't sending out like anything. I, I It wasn't even showing I was live on my own channel. I was so confused. I did check your songs out, man. Alright, so... <laughs> as we were talking about before... Um, sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought. What uh, what were we saying, Oscar? Ooh, I don't know. Oh, you were talking about um, Jester. Yeah, that's right. Um, oh, I was talking about how excited I am to just grind it out and really just put my my focus into it yep. because i do want it to be more than just apparel you know i'm 100 percent well more than just apparel. a thing too and like i know you probably feel this way it, it sucks when like when it comes to youtube and streaming and just everything twitch whatever you want to call it it yeah. it sucks having like trying to think of a future doing it built around a game Meanwhile, yeah. it's like, if you want to do your company, it's like, shit, I can do this stuff now. I can do this, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. When, like, for example, me right now, I'm way down FIFA 21. Okay, I'm going to grind FIFA 20. That's something I can do. I can think about, like, right. video ideas for FIFA 21. But I am i can't really, like, grind FIFA 21. It's not available yet. So, right. kind of, like, figuring the workaround for that. And yeah, that's another reason why, like, I'm not bashing people who want to do this full time, but, like... There's a difference between full-time content creation and streaming comfortably and doing yeah. it and, like, having it consume your life. Because there's so many right. people who try to make that transition, and it's it's not an easy one. Like, a lot of people have cool. to wait till they're well off before they can do it. A lot of us, I mean. A lot of content creators transition out of one specific game, and whether yeah. that be... They transitioned to another game or they transitioned completely out of gaming like FaZe did and yep. made shots is beginning to do it. So, you know, that that's something I wanted to talk to you about in terms of not only like gaming, but just like apparel and stuff. I want to talk to you about that in a sec, but let, let me read some comments real quick. You like it? Like the whole single style is trying something new? Yeah, man, it was cool. I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't think it's going to be number one on the billboard charts, but I think it's cool for you. Not saying it's like an insult. Like, keep working on it. See how you are in a year. Um, L, just kidding. I'm Lana. What's up, Lana? How are you doing today, man? And sorry, guys, if you were expecting a different stream or, like, I don't even know how to explain it. I was live, but I also wasn't live. I, I Like, that, that's all I can say is I'm seeing it right here. I, I'm seeing a live replay of my stream, but it's, like, showing that I wasn't live. I'm so, I'm literally I've so that, confused. I've had that happen to me once. It's really weird. I so had re, I had to restart it. But this was a long time ago. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep but it up on the they, channel. Ever since they started adding those like creator, the creator studio, it's gotten like super clunky, which is. They're, I understand why they're yeah. trying to make things better, but it wasn't broken. It was really, really good. That's the issue I have with YouTube. Is like I feel like they're constantly in a place of like, people are bitching us so much. How can we make our site better? While at the same time not destroying our site. And I feel like they like constantly try something new. And then it's a problem that they didn't even see coming. 
like remember sub boxes i feel like sub boxes still have some sort of problem but i remember when that's like everyone was talking about they're like yo uh your sub boxes kind of suck you might want to look into this as something to fix and it took them forever to want to do it yep yeah and by the time they did do it like now that sub boxes are super weird yeah like, the fact that i have to i have to ring a bell i have to i have to subscribe if i subscribe i want to see your content why would i need to ring a bell like i know this was a massive change like i changed a long time ago but it still bothers me to this day and even yep. when you have the bell you don't always get notifications it's one of those things where it's just like that gummit yep. <laughs> fix it please just fix it but i mean I that, you're getting as much content thrown under their site and you have as many people that are each and every day you have a new a new content creator reaching a million subscribers right and so when you have that many uh like the, that many content creators that are doing this for a living and you have all these people with different ideas of how the site should be run the best and what i can i can understand why it's difficult yeah so but still wish they'd fix some things but whatever you know dude it is I, what it is. i'm still even like i'm i'm trying to understand the difference between these two live streams that I'm doing. And I'm like looking to see if I can add tags, descriptions. It's literally all there, but then it shows it's not there, which is very frustrating. Cause it's like, okay, if you, you want to tags to your stream. Yeah. You got to pull it up as a video. So you got to go f to your creator studio on the video section and then yeah. you got to change it to live. And then it'll show like, if you have a current live stream and the past ones, so you click on the live now one and it'll let you edit and like add stuff if you want it to the description. Um, let me Bronx see. pack method FIFA ultimate team. But it's super frustrating because like I have a lot of preset ones. I keep adding to like videos or um, streams after the fact, but you don't know if it's there. Also, I've never had notification problems in my life. I don't get why people complain. It's it's very different for different people is what I've come to understand. Some people never have problems. I don't know if it's a thing with like their phones. So like for me, I know on my phone, I don't have YouTube notifications on on my phone. So even though I have YouTube notifications on in general, I'm not going to get anything from my phone. I personally have it that way. But when it comes to notifications elsewhere, I don't get notified for videos, whether that's like a computer, tablet. I, I just, it makes no sense to me. Maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm missing something completely, but. We're gonna start making some upgrade packs too, so we're not missing on too many. We gotta keep opening upgrade packs as well. But what, what's frustrating about Oscar is like, especially I don't know how YouTube gaming works. So it's like, mm -hmm. I wanna make sure I'm appearing as many places as I can. Right. And it's frustrating that they're not like just straightforward with what that looks like. Yeah. I didn't even know I could add tags. I've been streaming without tags this entire time. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's gonna make a difference, but yeah. I'm sure it makes some it, kind of difference. It, 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 may, it can make a lot of difference. Cause it goes from someone, cause like you can look too in terms of like who views your content. Someone might only come to your channel or only on your video because it was a certain tag that they looked up in the search bar. That's crazy. So like a lot of my traffic and like why I'm trying to like get my retention up is I get a lot of people that like come for one-off videos and yeah. then the goal is to try to get them to stay. Right. How can right. you get them to stay? So like I try to make my content similar in the sense of, hey, I'm gonna provide this service for you. I'm gonna do a lot of like cheapest solutions for these player cards you're trying to get. But also at the same time, like, hey, 
if I want to do something where it's like a Road to Glory or like a Let's Play, where you're seeing my progress throughout the game, where I know it's going to be harder for me to grow through that and for people to find it, my thing is, okay, my marketing is going to be the cheapest solution videos, and if they happen to like me as a person or want to like support the series, I will grow more with the Let's Play through that than I would just um by just doing the let's play if that makes any sense whatsoever yeah well i knew that i needed tags and i remember with the classic i knew that it was pretty easy to add tags but with studio i had I, you know i didn't have a whole lot of experience with studio and so i was like yeah. looking when i start streaming i was like dude i can't find where to add the tags and i just never took the time to like look it up i was just like, whatever i'll just start the stream and if people stop by they stop by sweet if not then they mm -hmm. don't you know so, which is kind of ignorant of me to do, but you know, it is what, what it is. But now that I know, I'll make sure to add those at the start of streams next time. But it's like, yeah, like you kind of brought it up too. You were talking about like streaming on Twitch compared to YouTube, and you're like, Dude, I like yeah. there. There's a future in Google and YouTube that's that's so big that people don't even realize yet. Like Twitch, yeah. Twitch is big. Twitch will stay big. Yeah. Both sites will be great, but like the amount of traffic that Google gets on a daily basis is so insane. It's stupid that it's like if you're not doing anything on the site, whether it's making videos, uploading some sort of content streams, you're yeah. missing out potentially on something that can be huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those, again, it's one of those things that like, it's all about discoverability. It's all about getting your thumbnail, your face, your name in as many places. If you want to grow, if you don't want to grow, then and you just do this because you have fun. There's nothing wrong with that. That's cool. But if you're truly looking to grow, you need to be in a place that's going to, that, that has implemented discoverability. Instagram yeah. has it. Um, you know, Twitch has, or I mean, Twitter has a, a, a discover, uh, algorithm. So, so mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you can, anything can pop off on Twitter. Um, and the same thing with, with YouTube, anything can pop off with YouTube with Twitch. It's not the case. Yeah. But like I said before with Twitch, if you can, if you somehow manage with a, you know, insane uh, amount of luck, you catch the right wave or whatever you explode. Like yeah. you don't necessarily explode like that with YouTube. Left you what's up, homie? Anymore, but with with Twitch, you literally get thrown into the limelight. Yeah, it's and you never know when that is. I remember like playing and like you said perfectly. Like you don't have to want to grow to even have the ability to grow. The best right. way to explain it: when I graduated high school, I went yeah. all middle school watching Call of Duty multiplayer. Yeah. A lot of commentaries. I'm like, I would love to do that one day, but I didn't have like. Yes, there's always the ability to make some sort of video. I remember I would used to like point my my Android at the screen while I played yeah. Call of Duty and set it up on a freaking like bookshelf to try to get a like good angle where you can't even see the gameplay. But I'm like, hey, this is better than nothing. And then I would try to do like live commentary over it. Right. Things like that. I was like, hey, I want to do it. I don't necessarily have the tools that make me look clean and sharp but i know like down the line they can get better so like high yeah. school towards the end of high school i bought an elgato and i was like "Ooh, i love watching like montages i'm not good at sniping but like i love watching these i wonder if yeah. i could make it myself it was almost kind of like a passion project where i knew it wouldn't really get views but i'm like hey i'm gonna just try this out and see what happens and then it turned into like i would do scrims every day after school with my friends and if my friends weren't able to scrim because they were gone on a road trip, the family, they would be like, yo, Reed, do a live stream either on YouTube or Twitch and we can like watch through that. And then slowly over time, that kind of like grew with YouTube when I got to college was just doing scrims, hanging out with my friends, provided an opportunity of growth. And what was cool with the opportunity of growth was, yeah, it was through like an individual game but like live streaming gives you the opportunity to have people like see you as a person. Right. And through that, I still have people who watch me who literally have nothing to do with FIFA, but they're like, yo, like, Amazing. It's, you so, got my bell on. it's so cool. You're still around. 
I think, you know, it was funny. Early today, I was mining, right? And I stopped. I, I stopped because that my inventory was full. And I there for a split second, I was like, you know what? I'm not. Gonna, I'm done mining because I've been mining this massive hallway, just collecting stone, right? And I'm like, I'm yeah. Bored. Well, I stopped, and then I, I, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do. Let me do like another hour of this. That's not. I can. I can deal with another hour. I kid you not. I get back, and the first block I mine, there was a diamond. <laughs> and I just start. I just busted out laughing. That makes me think. <laughs> that makes me think of that. Uh, you know, a meme. Not even a meme. Yeah. It's like the motivation the little, thing. Yeah, the little yeah. analogy thing. That's exactly what came to to my my head. I was like, this is exactly what they mean when they say never give up. And literally anyone that has ever made it. And, and and this goes from movie stars to well-known businesses, business people to, you name it. They just they simply just didn't give up. It, there was yeah. it, that's all it was. There were there wasn't like yeah there might be some level of luck somewhere thrown in there, but by and large it's just someone who was never willing to stop. They're like you know what I'm going to make this work, and I will work whatever jobs I have to, in in order to make it work. And, you know with COVID being thrown in it kind of helped because people yep. like, well I can't work I have to you know but the the point is is like just don't give up you if you want to do something great do it just don't give up and uh, i think a lot of people fail to recognize what kind of power there is behind never being willing to stop you know well you know? I, th I think something that like throughout the course of time that's like pissed me off more than anything is like one <clears throat> don't give up that that's a given but when, when i see people like make excuses and then people treat it as if it's a fact nothing makes right. me more pissed than that like when yeah. i when i hear someone say like oh man like you know i got in at the wrong time there's so many people doing it now um right. i remember doing it back a couple years ago when you could actually have an audience and then i kind of lost that there's no point to do it anymore or not even that there's no point to do it they're like um i can't because xyz it's like no you can it's just harder it's a different sort of fight it's a different sort of yeah. look right how, how are you going to adapt to it agreed because People like willing to adapt. That's yeah funny. i i remember golden time of youtube when like my channel was growing and i like at the time yeah you're thinking how can you keep growing how can you keep growing but also at the same time i'm like dude i realized that this could not be here tomorrow especially yeah. with wanting to like switch games i'm like I'm not gonna just kill myself over mm -hmm. trying to make content to please other people. I'm gonna do whatever pleases me, whatever right. follows follows. Because like the world is stressful as it is. Why do you have to make a hobby another job? And not even right. a job. Like I don't even like the word job. Something you don't enjoy. Yeah. Here's a, here's a crazy thing. Here's a here's a here's a crazy thought. Let's take someone who says it's not the same. They missed the golden age. They had a, a million subscribers, right? And then they decided to quit, right? They're just out of the out of loop. They've been gone for three or four years now. Mm -hmm. So their channel is quote unquote dead, right? So let's say that happened. But let's say they're like, you know, uh, yeah, I missed the golden age, but you know what? I'm going to look at my channel and this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the next three months and I'm truly gonna sit back and I'm gonna plan out how I'm going to come back to YouTube. I'm gonna do it in a way that's gonna be Fun for me, enjoyable for me, insightful for others, and entertaining for yep. the masses. Right? Let's let's take that moment. I a hundred percent guarantee you, they're going to be like, you know what? YouTube is actually more fun now than it has ever been for me. And you're like, well, why is that? Well, I'm making content I enjoy. I've done it in a way that is creative. I'm I'm making a living, and the people that I'm I am I'm interacting with, I enjoy spending time with them whether that be a viewer, you know, interacting via the comment section or going to different meetups and things like yep. that. The, the, the idea that there's, there's, there's a golden age, I think is, is heavily dependent on your perspective of things and, and how you approach your career, your work, whatever it is. Right. Cause there can be like, I could be like, there's a golden age for basketball. Yeah. It was when I was able to play, <laughs> but I can no longer play. Right. It's like, well, yeah. no, basketball's still fun. It's really enjoyable to watch. And I've become a huge Mavericks fan lately. You know, and all of a sudden I have this this new this new perspective of basketball. And it's one of a fan. Not because I, you know, I don't love basketball because I play anymore. I don't play. I haven't played in years. Yeah. I love basketball because it's just fun and entertaining to watch. And the storylines that go along with sports. And, and so 
I 100% believe it's it's based purely off perspective, and and then, so I, I I don't know. I think maybe in certain career fields you can be like, yeah, there's a golden age, but by and large, I think with entertainment, it, there is I don't think there's a, such a thing as a golden age. Well, it's, it's based off of the person's perspective. I'll I'll give I'll give you an example with like stocks. So everyone looks at something like Tesla, and they think, damn. If only I like would have known about Tesla when it was a penny stock, when it was only a couple dollars. Look at what it's at now. It's like, man, if only I would have invested then. Yeah, you're right. If only you would have invested then. But you're forgetting two things. One, it has the potential to keep growing. Like this company you're talking about, if you invest now, it can be still worth more and get you more money. You're, you're, You're just complaining. You might be complaining that it's not as much as you thought it could have been. Okay. At the same time, there's also thousands of companies out there that are going to be the next Amazon, the next Tesla, all these things. And you aren't looking for them rather than you're just saying, oh man, like if only. But like the thing is like me getting into stocks, something I realize is a lot of people outside of stocks have like a weird mindset when it comes to stocks because like people in it actually researching, they know about these things. It's like, okay, I'm going to invest in these Typically, what they think is, oh, I should have held on longer, or, oh, I didn't put enough into that. That's their biggest buyback. They're not like, oh, I, I wish I would have. Some, maybe it's, I wish I shouldn't have done that. But, like, once you develop a habit pattern, you can kind of pick up on that. But right. something is outsiders, especially for people getting in it for the first time, they see it as, oh, this can be your source of easy money. And once you get in the habit of, oh, this is easy money, you're going to realize, okay, you want certainty. I can give you certainty on an investment right now. You know what it is? Put money in the bank. They're going to charge an interest rate that's super low on the money where you're barely going to make any more. In a year, you might make a couple bucks more. Hey, yeah. safest investment you can make. Yeah. Yeah. People aren't willing to to do the research and take – risk is your I – think, I think people's lives are going to be heavily tied – to their ability to handle risk. So yeah. if you if you want to you want to make a lot of money, right? And you want to have super duper nice things, right? There are two ways of doing that. You take out a lot of debt and you buy it, or you have a really, really good job, you save up and you buy it, right? Um, either way, you're risking one, with debt, you're risking your livelihood because if something yep. happens and you get called on those notes, you can't pay it back. Well, you're now in a massive hole. You're already in a hole. Um, but two, uh, or the second option is you've risked or, or, or paid with your time, which is the most valuable commodity, right? Like they, you don't get time. Everyone has a yeah. certain amount of time. You don't get that back. And so um, people just aren't willing to think outside the box and utilize whatever time God has given them because we don't know, right? But but most people aren't willing to just take time to, to learn the things that they need to about the things that they're interested in and then just attack it, you know? Well, it's it, it, it it's, it's instant gratification. And I feel like a lot of that's due to social yeah. media because cause I, I was thinking about this today and it, it made me sad. Remember when you're a kid and you didn't have electronics and you, like, you still had a blast? Yeah, there were video yeah. games you played, but like you didn't have a phone that you were sitting on constantly scrolling through right. social media. You knew yourself, you knew your right. brothers and sisters, you knew your family, yeah. you knew the yeah. kids on your block, and the people yeah. at your school. That was basically it. Was a, it. Lot, of, it was and, a lot of backyard time and a lot of ninja yes, being played. Yes, but guess what? The things that affected your day-to-day problems wasn't at a nation level, wasn't at a world level. It was the people around you. And if there's something you need to get done, something you need to fix, you would get it done with the people around you. If it was, right. hey, your parents said you shouldn't be doing this, you haven't adjusted your behavior to do it, that's great. Now we're living in a time where we, we like, quarantine, perfect example. We all miss seeing people. We all right. want that, like, interaction. And the yeah. thing that social media gives us that's so toxic, in my opinion, is you sometimes get that like interaction through kind of like watching from a distance people live their life. So when people post like Instagram pictures, when people are having a conversation, people are talking politics, anything, when people tweet, you're viewing it as a consumer. You're consuming that content. 
But in your head, you feel like you know this person. Even if it is a friend, you feel like you know that person and like you're having a genuine conversation. It's not the same as like straight up face to face. And then like we throw in like arguments and stuff online. How the hell are you going to have an argument with a person you never met online through like literally sending a message? Like it, it doesn't make sense to me. And like yeah. just thinking as a kid that that would happen, crazy. But like yeah. the the point I say that is like think about all the stress now that comes from trying to please people online that really don't care about you to begin with. Right. Is just amplified, and then you feel like you have to be a certain way. You feel like you have to make certain content for YouTube, right. for Twitch streaming, and it's like we build in all this pressure on ourselves. No wonder we don't want to do shit. No wonder we want to sit there and watch Netflix or just watch someone do YouTube. Watch someone yeah. do something that we wanted to do because you don't want to take that risk. You, right. you literally live a life of fear. And then you sit there and like, what the hell, man? What the fuck happened even, to me? Even Summit, Summit uh, 1G, like a few days ago apparently, said something like, you guys ruined streaming for me. Like, y'all make it, like, you make me want to not play video games. He's like, I don't ever want that. That sucks. How can, he's like, how do you like, this stuff you guys say in chat just makes me not want to stream and play video games. He's like, yeah. I, you know. And he, I don't know how serious he was, but he's like, dude, I might just run my contract out with Twitch, and and then we'll see if I like if I stay on the site. He's like, I just there's no reason that I should be this upset and not be able to enjoy something that I've done my entire life, yeah. like my passion, something that's made you know that he's made a career out of. Like, there's no reason I should be this upset. Yep. You know, and he's like, it, it's crazy to me how how impactful people you've never met but only interact through words basically via a chat like the impact that they can have on on you and your mood if you i don't want to say that someone's not mentally strong because i know he is but like if you just don't have the tools or you if you've been dealing with it non-stop yeah. like even the the mentally toughest person is going to break at some point but, it's like it's so weird though because it's like i remember when i was a kid if i wanted to not necessarily fight but if if I was on the playground and there's a kid I didn't like and there's a pile of rocks, it would be very easy to chuck a rock in that direction, have it hit them, yep. me turn around, act like it wasn't me, and hear them, not like crying pain in the sense like they're bawling their eyes out, but like, hey, who the heck did that sort of thing, yeah. get a reaction out of them and be like, yo, like... I was angry and I did that. Boom. <laughs> when it's online, you don't get to really see the reaction unless a person's reacting. But like yeah. that that rock you're throwing, it might it might seem like a pebble to you, but like imagine if you have a thousand people throwing pebbles at you. It gets kinda it's heavy. Hurts. Yeah. And I could see like Summit <clears throat> why he would feel that way. And also yeah, too with fifty thousand people in your chat room. Yeah. But, like, think of it this way. If every kid on the playground turned around at one kid started throwing rocks, school would know about it. People would get in trouble. There'd be consequences. What are your consequences when you're an anonymous online username, whether on YouTube or Twitch? There isn't one. So it's like, (laughs) if there's no punishment for it, how the hell are you going to, like, learn from it? You know? And the thing that pisses me off, and, like, I even have to step back and, like, think about this when there's, like, streaming or, like, YouTube drama... Everyone loves to, like, talk about mental health. Until you have an opportunity to be a bigger person. Then it seems like people don't take it. Like, perfect example. There are a lot of people online who have been in drama, but also struggle with mental health. And there's this, like, weird... There's this weird thing around it where it's like, okay. You're going to hear this person talk about mental health. You're going to be all for it. Till Keemstar makes a video and says something negative about them that may or may not be true. So now off that your information, you're more than willing to go to their streams, talk shit about them, make YouTube videos, talk shit about them, say rude things about them, just in general. For what? Like, what's that going to do? You see a hashtag trending? Cancel Leafy, cancel Leafy, cancel, I don't know, whatever you want. Like, it, it makes no sense to me. The more and more I'm on social media... The yeah. less and less I want to be on it because it's getting so toxic. Yeah. And not only that, we now are, we're seeing a generation of people who grew up in this. 
So yeah, us, it was it. we we had a childhood without it. These yeah. are a lot of people's childhoods. So the unfortunate thing is, I think you're about to what we're going to see in the next ten to fifteen years, maybe in twenty years. Uh, yeah, in like next ten to twenty years, and probably for for the foreseeable future, because of generations growing up with purely social media, is what you see with childhood stars. Yep, you're beginning to see it now, but I I really think it's going to hit ahead. Uh, in the next 10 to 15, 20 years of like, just, it's insane to me. If you look at how many childhood stars have just like lost, lost their sense of identity and have just basically gone crazy. It's because they've been in the limelight. Their entire life. They, have, they don't know life without it. It's funny that you said that. Cause I was just listening to part of Joe Rogan's podcast today and he had Miley Cyrus on and he was, yeah. he was talking about that. He's like, how crazy was it being a teenager like trying to have a normal life and then at the same time balancing all this stuff that's literally a career, like full time job plus. And she literally said, She's like, it's she's like, I had a game she's like, I had a game I played with myself where like I would try to see how sane I could be while like the second I'm not recording, I'm just smoking as much weed as I can. And like she was yeah. talking about her whole family, they would just smoke like crazy. And like the, the funny thing was, because she's Disney Channel, so she was like a big Disney Channel star. She was the innocent person. She had this whole persona. And what she said was kind of like what you're talking about. She's like, I find it so funny, though, because like people have this conception in Hollywood. It's like everyone thinks you're going crazy. There's some truth to that. But she's like, the, the funny thing that I find is the second you break free from like those contracts or the second you break free of that person that they want you to be, and you right. actually be who you want to be, that's when they call you crazy. Right. I'm like, wow, I even feel that way in my life. Think right. about all the people who cheer you on for doing certain things. And then yeah. and they say, follow your dreams, follow your dreams. But the second you actually follow your dream, they start yeah. judging you. They're like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, Oscar, I, I see you're streaming in some of this company, but you're not really hanging out with us anymore. You're not really playing video games with us anymore. Yeah. You, you changed, man. What happened? As if it's a right. bad thing. It's like, damn. Right. And no, like, I, so, I have had family members talk to me. Um, I've heard from, from, okay, I haven't heard it face to face. No one said anything face, like straight to my mm -hmm. face. Um, but from like other family members being like, oh, yo, so-and-so said this. Um, we were talking about it. And, um, you know, like, like I'm basically just not doing shit with my life. And my response to my, to, to my family member that was telling me this, I was like, it's not, it's, and I, I looked, looked them straight in the eyes and I was like, it's not doing shit until it, until it is. Yeah. And they looked back at me like, you know, kind of weird. And they were like, wait, what? And I was like, it's not doing shit until it is, you know, you're not flying until you are, you're not, you're not running until you are, you know, you're not building a company until all yep. of a sudden you know, you are, you're not, you're not streaming to thousands until you uh, are streaming to thousands of people until you are, you're not making money until you are, it, it, you can apply that if you're not doing something and, and just because you don't, what you perceive as someone doing something is different from someone else doesn't mean that they're not doing things, yeah. you know? Well, another thing too, it's like, I, society puts pressure on people, but also people right. put pressure on people. I, I will say something right now that is so basic, but I guarantee you haven't thought about it this second. And most people don't even think about it. It's like, okay, take Nate Chubb, for example. What does yeah. Nate Chubb do in his life? He owns a company. Yep. He makes apparel and he's yep. able to play video games. Yep. I, I find it funny how like the people who talk shit or like say, what are you doing? Like this might not work. It's like, Hey, what do you want to do in your life? I know what Oscar wants to do in his life. He wants to have a company. Yeah. Boom, he has a company. He wants to play video games on a daily basis. Boom, he's playing video games on a daily basis. The amount of time you're able to, the amount of money you're about to make off of it, could change any day. It doesn't matter. The fact right. that you're doing it, because it's like this, okay? When you're on a diet, the, this is, I think, a better example. People who like try to lose weight, who yeah. cut everything out of their diet, where it's like they're going through hell... And they're not yeah. going to be able to maintain this and just yo-yo and they get back off. They're like, oh, if only I could have like a cupcake right now. And it's like, wait, wait, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Why can't you have a cupcake? Oh, I'm on a diet. 
okay, but if you eat the cupcake, let's say you have the cupcake. How many calories are you eating a day? Uh, 2,000, okay. So, instead of eating more calories than something else, if you want to eat that cupcake today, either do a little bit more cardio or don't eat the other thing you're going to eat that is that much. Right. It's a number at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, for me, that it's a perfect example of, like, dieting in the past is I was telling myself, I'm like, if I really want to, like, see cha- not only change, but, like, keep it going over time, I have to feel like I'm not on a diet. And what helped me with that is kind of, like, coming up with my own recipes, looking online for, like, healthier stuff. To now, yeah. I'm, make, I'm making, like, protein ice cream, protein pancakes. I'm making uh, pro- literally protein muffins. Protein... <laughs> anything right the other day i made protein donuts where it's literally just like a protein muffin but like you can make it into a donut shape that i took like um greek yogurt and then i put like a little bit of um cream cheese in it and some protein powder and i made like a frosting out of it it tasted amazing very high in protein it's like okay it might not be as good tasting as a donut but it's 75% 75% of the way there. Right. It and it, yeah, it's like if you can have that feeling, I'll tell you what though, if you go from not having a donut for a while and then you have yeah. a protein donut, it's going to taste pretty damn good just right. because like the, the distance. Difference. And like, it's just, that upsets me because it's like people have the ability in their life to be happy and like yeah. do things that make them happy, but they feel like they have to do it a certain way. Oh, I can't start my own business. I have to have financial security in this job before I do that. Okay, so you're going to put off starting this company off of fear, and you're just going to wait till you're financially stable. Guess what? No matter how much money you have, no one feels financially stable. Why do you think there's people who are literally like billionaires who still work? Yeah, they're financially stable, but it just becomes a part of what they want to do. It becomes a part of who they are, and that's the reason they won't stop. You see a lot of athletes who literally lose their life's purpose after they're done being pro or after they compete at the Olympic games because they hit the peak of what they feel they're meant to do in life. And then it's up to them from that point to decide what they want to do. Michael Phelps is a perfect example. One of the best athletes ever to come out of the Olympics literally was clinically depressed for, I think over a year, he said recently. And for him, he literally had to channel that. And he's like, okay, what can I do after the fact? I know I can't, do what I used to be able to do, but doesn't mean I can't be useful in other ways. Right. I think that's the interesting, like, I find that, so So basically, when when I decided I was going to start Jester, like I've said, I've, I've been holding on to the idea for like a little over a year, roughly around yeah. now, right? Something I've dreamed about for four or five, and I literally got to the point where like it started to stress me out more not starting the company than it was because it was one of those things where I, it was a mental battle. It was like, yeah. I'm scared to start it because I know what happens when you start a business. And I know the stress that comes with it, but I ha- like I have to do this kind of kind of mental battle. And yep. I think that's kind of what Nate was going through whenever he started 100 Thieves was like, there's a purpose in my life. I have this idea, but I, I, like, I thought coming to LA would and making content would be it. And you eventually get to the point where like you've made so much content that like another day is just like, you know, it's just another day. And I feel like for him, it was a creative outlet uh, with the apparel side. And you're beginning to see a kind of refreshed Matthew Haig in the sense that he's now able to play video games again. And it doesn't seem like, you know, I, I can only make assumptions, but like, yeah. it seems like he's in a much happier place. He has a, he has a girlfriend and they seem to be doing really, really well. And, I just, the world could be a whole lot better if people were willing to step out and be a little uncomfortable um, yeah. and, and take on challenges that they otherwise wouldn't. But, you know, who am I? <laughs> but, like, that that's the thing, too, is, like, pe- pe- I, I think the biggest thing when it comes to people, like, following their dreams or trying to do something is yeah. they have an idea in their mind of what it looks like. No matter what you do, it's never going to end up like that. It can be very close, but it's never going to look exactly like that. But even like, even this is why I don't understand and why like I'm such a big advocate for personal responsibility. Think think about election time right now. Everyone's going to be campaigning on how this 
candidate can make your life better. Okay, maybe there's some policy that they can do that can make some sort of change happen that could potentially positive affect you. But the most change that you can make is going to come from your own life. And it doesn't matter who's fucking running for president, who's mm -hmm. your boss, who your family is. If you're not willing to want to improve yourself, one, how how are you going to be able to improve other people? How are you going to be able to like be there for other people if you can't even be there for yourself? That's number one. Yeah. But two, it's like, how can you expect to make change happen in the world? Like Jordan Peterson says the best. How can you expect change to happen in the world when you to make change happen? I, I can't speak. How can you expect yourself to make change in the world if you can't even make your bed in the morning? It's like the per. <laughs> it's like it's like damn. <laughs> that hurts. Be right back, guys. I gotta go make my uh, bed. <laughs> yeah. But no, like, the, the way he, like, even said and people, like, made fun of him, like, oh, yeah, because making your bed's gonna, like, change your whole life. No, it's not gonna change your whole life, but, like, you make your it's bed in the moment, you get in the <laughs> habit of doing it, what, what, yeah. pro, what pros come from making your bed? Not really a lot in the sense of, like, people really don't want to do it, they kind of want to put it off, like, it's a very easy thing, but it's like, okay, you make your bed, okay, now you brush your teeth. What else do you do? Yeah. Do you now check Twitter? Do you talk to your family? Like, what do you do when you brush your teeth? Okay. How can you do something that's productive there? Can you take the trash out? Can you clean the table? Can you... And you slowly, you got to stack these things over time. And, like, I know for me personally, it's like, I struggle in a lot of these areas. And, yeah. like, I personally want to be a homeowner soon. I want to... Yeah. Like, I want to invest in a house is like my first thing I do once I'm um, been at my job for a little bit. So I don't know how many months or a year or so, but like I want to eventually like own a house and then like if it's lease out a room to someone, like have a friend come live with me, sister, yeah. so be it. I want to have that responsibility. But then I, I think to myself, I'm like, okay, the time I'll know I'll be ready to do that is if I can keep my room clean here because if I can't keep my own fucking room clean in the house that my parents let me live in how the hell am I going to keep a whole fucking house clean that I own then it goes to as well it's like okay do I do the dishes do I do my laundry right partly I, I, I struggle with laundry more but it's like you have all these like little challenges little things that if you can't do on a small level yeah. How do you expect it to do on a big level? Same thing with like athletes. It's like, okay, if the athlete's not practicing, if they're not putting in time and effort to work on their craft, yeah. how do you expect them to be ready for the championship game or any game for that matter? They're not. Yeah. Which is the point. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Look, you're light years ahead of other people your age, so... Stick the course. Stick I the course. see. I refuse to think that though, because like, in my head, I look at all the people my age who have so much more. Not in the sense of like I'm jealous of what they have, but it's like you always have another reason to keep working. Well, yeah, but I mean, do they actually have more than what you have? Well, like, so, so you got it. Got no. I was gonna say I talked to my boss today because like each week. Typically, everyone gets, like, a monthly report where you, like, meet with your boss. And since we're online, it's just, like, a Skype call. But you meet with them. They go over your report with you, like, how much activity you've had on certain things each week in terms of, like, progress you've been making on your projects. And right. they don't expect you to do a certain amount because it differs from week to week. But, like, right. if they see you struggling in an area, they'll bring it up to you. And, like, for me, I didn't know how they fucking tracked it. So I just went balls to the wall hard, like, the first week. Then I learned it a little bit, went balls to the wall hard, got a little better in the next week, and then a little better in the next week. And like, when they talked to me, this was, I had a meeting today, last week, they were like, yeah, you keep like, getting better each week. Um, and then I was the one who brought it out this week. I'm like, hey, let me show you the workout I'm doing on XYZ, this is what I've done. Let me know if there's anything I can prove. And my boss said, First of all, I, I appreciate you like showing me the work you're doing because not a lot of people do that. A lot of people just like kind of talk about it, but it's hard to get like an idea of exactly what they're doing unless you can like literally share your screen and show them. But then too, she's like, um, we don't really talk about numbers because like 
each week it differs, but to give you perspective, you're you're at par of the people who've been here the longest at the company. I'm like, oh, that's what's up. Okay, so I'm the new I'm the newest member of the team. I just took over for a guy who's been here for a while, who's really good at his job. And in my head, I'm like, dude, how the hell am I going to be able to do a job as well as him? He taught me like some things to do and like how I could improve. But it was after he left where I had to bring it on myself and be like, hey, no one's checking in on me. No one's like telling me how much work I have to do on a daily basis. If I want to go take an hour break right now without my boss knowing and just go play video games or go fucking eat, do whatever, like I can, but that might negatively affect my job performance. But it's, right. it's, it's something where it's like that one time, if I did it for like, let's say in a month. I had an hour total of allotted time. It doesn't have to all be at once where I just fucked around and didn't do work. Okay, that might not seem like a lot, but if you get in the habit of doing that and you're not getting called out on it, slowly over time, you're going to test the boundaries, see how much more personal time besides your breaks that you're allotted, your lunch time. And then slowly over time, it's going to be like a thing of, oh, yeah, because it's because I had less work this week. Okay. But when you get a shit ton of work dumped on you, then what's your response? When your boss needs you to go above and beyond, it's like, what are you going to do? And like in my head, I don't see myself being in the position I'm at right now long term. I want to grow through the company in terms of positions and or find a position that I'd want elsewhere. And I, I'm yeah. very open with it with my boss. I've talked to her. I'm like, hey, I, I really love the position I'm at now because I feel like it has me get a better understanding of like the company, what you guys stand for and kind of the whole industry as a whole of like motorcycles. But I'll be honest, I, I didn't really know anything about motorcycles. So I feel like I'm at a disadvantage. And if I can find a job where it's, let's say something with soccer doing a similar thing, I would take it in a heartbeat because it's now a passion for me. Um, right. But they understand that and like, they're willing to work with me and they're like, okay, well we're going to give you enough work where it's not only challenging, but you can also like understand the industry more. Cause I was talking to my boss. I'm like, I would love to have a more marketing, social media related job. And she's like, I would love you to do that too. But a big thing for like the people we hire for that. And right now they're not hiring for it. There's that room or space, but even if they did, they're looking to hire people who have like an insight of the industry because the social media is going to these bike events. The social media is, posting these new bike products, talking to the bike racers, all these people and things, I have no idea what they are. And like, I thought to myself, I'm like, damn, no matter how much time I invest in this, I don't think I'm ever going to be passionate for that. So I know in my head, I can't take that job. Yeah. Because like, here's my thing too. It's like, yeah, it might be a little bit of a pay upgrade, but me knowing I took the dream job of someone else who wanted to get that job in the industry just because I've already been there doesn't sit well for me knowing that like i'm not going to go above and beyond for it right but like let, let's say for example i like youtube was my full-time job no matter how much money i make no matter what i would want to make sure i'm like improving my content putting my all into it whatever it is whatever i feel passionate to do because that's where i'm at if if i feel like i'm lacking it's going to be me calling myself out not really people in chat not really people like online in general, because one, I could care less what a random person has to say about like anything I do online. But like two, it's like the per people I will trust to tell me that are going to be the close circle and you're included in that. No. But you know where I'm at. This is just like a fun hobby for me. But like at the same time, I, I remember when we were in Haunted and you knew my intentions of wanting to do this. I remember you yeah. called me out. You're like, yo, like I, I get you're trying to grow, but like, what growth do you think you're going to get through like messaging every single person to check out your content? Yeah. I'm like, in, in my head, I'm like, well, if I do it enough, enough people are then going to come by, which is more money and then more reason for me to do it. It was like, right. oh, but then in my head, I thought about it some more. I'm like, oh, so I'm expecting all this out of someone. I have no idea who they are. My first thing, right. like my, my first instinct is, hey, we might be friends down the line with this person. But my first instinct yeah. is, how can I use this person to help me before I even know them? It was like, yeah. damn. It, 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 it's definitely a value thing. Like, 
if you're not bringing value to them, why would they want to? And it's not, you know, it's not selfish of them. You know, it's and yeah. that's anybody though. Like if you're not bringing value to, to whoever it is that you're trying to get to check out your content or you know whatever it is, they're not going to check it out if if you don't bring them some level yeah. of value. And that's and that's not just in the entertainment industry. That's in any industry. If if you're not able to bring some type of value, um, you don't get anything out of it. You, you, yep. you don't bring value at your job. You don't have a job. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know what I mean? So uh, relationships so, too. Exactly. If you don't bring value and, and you're not working on the relationship, you don't have a relationship. And that's the nature. That's that's the nature of it. You know, and it's very interesting to me how. You know, I, and I recognized that early on. And also, just didn't, it didn't feel, it never felt right for me. Like, I tried the whole messaging people thing, and I was like, I can't do this, bro. Like, I, I, I don't want to do this. I feel grimy. I feel weird. Yep. It doesn't feel and right. See, I, I did too, but I distanced myself from that feeling. I found, like, I, I talked to Eric about it, and he showed me, like, a bot that could do it. So, all I had to do was follow a bunch of people. And then, if they followed back every single day, the new followers would get a message, like, self made from the bot that I could create. So it was like taking a, so it was like the, pe the majority didn't respond. And the ones that right. did part, like part of them was either checking out their own content or being like, yeah, I'll check it out eventually. But part of that too is like, fuck right off. <laughs> it's right. like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, so be it. But in my head, I'm that like was the majority of my responses. And really quickly, I was like, if someone did this to me, I'd be pissed. Yeah. That, I, I literally, like, uh, the, the thing that changed it for me was in my stream, <laughs> one one of my longtime viewers, my stream, someone came in and self promoted and like my mod timed him out. And then my mod said like we don't self promote in here. And then like the person came back and like, what do you mean you don't self promote? <laughs> Mumbo literally sent me a message to come check out his like stream and I wanted to know if he'd check out mine. And I'm like You know, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But like I, I would justify at the time I was like, No, there's a time and the place. That's what I use Twitter for. And, they're, uh, and then the, their response was, yeah, and this is what I use YouTube for. And then it was kind of a collective of like, damn, maybe we're both in the wrong in the sense of, yeah. shit, we're arguing about who's in the right here or like who's more correct. Maybe we should realize, hey, let's just have a conversation with each other and see where it goes. And like, there's a problem here. <laughs> that, that, that's something that I hate in politics because like, especially with social media, social media and politics don't go well. Because it's a bunch of people arguing about who's going to be the better person to make change in the world. Meanwhile, every single politician has dirt on them. You can bring it up and literally make every single person look like the devil. I had this conversation with someone who politically is on the other side of the aisle that I met online. We were having a conversation in the Twitter DMs and I like explained to them. I'm like, because um, last week I reached out to them and I said, hey, I, I know like politics is getting heated. I wanted to check in you personally how you and your family are doing during this time. Make sure you like, you take some time away from social media because it can get crazy. They're like, thank you for looking out. I appreciate it. And like, we talked about like our faith a little bit, but then like yeah. they asked me the same question yesterday. I was like, honestly, the more, like the more into politics I'm getting in the sense of seeing it online and social media, the more I'm realizing a president really can't make change happen the way we want them to. And that it has to be you investing in your local community. And kind of like starting there. Cause I, I was thinking, I'm like, a lot of these things people are saying, it's like, I want to feel safer in my neighborhood. I want this, this park fixed. I want like a better job. I want this and that. It's like, okay. Yeah. A president might be able to help you a little bit. Like, let's say in your life, if you put in a percent, maybe a president can help 1%. You got to tell yourself, okay, maybe lucky that president will help with that 1% and get you to a better position. But at the end of the day, if you're only relying on that person, which is every four or eight years to give you that 1%, you're going to feel like you're not moving at all and you're stuck in life because even them as an individual can only get you so far. Yeah. But if you tell yourself and understand yourself, hey, I can get 100% myself. I don't even need them. I, it's not even a 99, but if I want to get 100%, I need that. It's like, no, you have the ability right now to do whatever you want to do. Don't let anyone yeah. tell you different. And the second someone tries to tell you different or make excuses on why you can't, it's not that I stop listening. It's I, I want to hear them out more. It's like, hey, why do you feel like you can't do this? And like one of the like 
the worst thing I see with not only politics, but just like online is people have this like built in perception of what people are tweeting is what reality is. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what sucks for a lot of people living in the city. Come out to the fucking country. You know how many people I know or like see at a bar, see at a restaurant that you can tell have never been on social media in their life. Maybe not even have a phone, but you could have a conversation with them and understand that they went their whole life without it and that they are living and surviving and they don't know like half the problems you're going through that are self-inflicted because of social media. And it's like, damn, that's crazy. Because like literally have a conversation with a farmer. Sorry not to cut you off, but it's like have a conversation with a farmer who's not on social media. You're, you're going to complain to them. You're going to be like, oh man, like these expectations of living up to these people online, their Instagrams, like, I just can't take it. This is just too overwhelming. That person's like, I woke up at the crack of dawn, prayed that my animals produced enough for my family to get by this week. Yeah. That's what I was worried about. <laughs> it's like, damn. Yeah, okay. I mean, the majority of them are going to tell you, they're like, you can get off social media like if they know what it is they're just gonna like they get off but people are addicted so <laughs> yeah, it, no, yeah. no, it, it's addicted. it's not that they don't want to get off it's they feel like they can't get off which right. but then that's the excuse it's like no you can't it's just gonna be hard yeah that's the, that's what they're gonna say they're like no you can it, it may be really hard but like if you are, are tired of having to live up to these quote-unquote standards then get off and and, yeah. and that's what you see with someone who doesn't deal with online and and social media and it's just a like a a nose to the grindstone type of person who just works really hard to provide for their family you see that like okay, yeah. well, like you're sitting here complaining about things that you can't control so get off of it like it, get it out of your life i'm not saying it's going to be easy it's not but if, if you want to see that change to get off it's, it's simple you're making it difficult when it you're making it more difficult than it should be you know what you know what you need to do so you get rid of the problem yep and most people just aren't willing to i'll do that. i'll give you one example right now so one of the things that I have been doing, like being able to work from home is during my lunch break is when I work out. And then like the last couple of minutes I'll eat lunch. So like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I can have like a uh, 20 to 25 minute workout because I have a half an hour lunch and the rest I'll eat. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, I only have this long to work out. I have to go balls to the wall. But then I'm like in the middle of the workout, I'm doing it. And it's like, eh, you know, it's been a long day at work. I'm getting tired. Like, I'm just going to put in some effort. It might not be as much as I want, but I'm at least going to do a little bit, even though I know in my head I can do more. I think to myself, I'm like, okay, maybe there's a better use of that minutes that I think I'm like, okay, when I'm at work, while I'm at home, how many times am I checking social media throughout the day? I'm like, how many times am I going to take a shit to check social media? How many times am I walking around my house or waiting for a new project to come in and I'm checking social media? Count up that time. And I literally like count it up. I'm like, Dude, I'm on social media for like over an hour during the workday. Whether that's like I'm in the process of working or it's like I'm my 20 minute break plus the little bit at lunch plus the yeah. minute or two in between like calls, things like that. It added up to about an hour. I'm like, damn. Imagine if every time I had the temptation to check my phone, I picked up the weights in the corner of my room and did j- yeah. just 10 bicep curls and went back to work or went back to whatever I was like had my attention before. I'm like, damn. I'd have a full ass workout plus it'd be like the hardest workout I've ever done in my life. I wouldn't even be able to curl anymore because I'd be so tired and I'd be a long as I was thinking about that too with like walking. So like with the, not diet I'm on, but like the way I'm kind of like eating right now is I'm eating almost 3000 calories a day and I'm losing weight. But for me to do that, I'm getting a lot of steps in. And if I put off my steps during the day and like do my typical walk at night, if anything changes my schedule, I kind of get put in a position where it's like, oh crap, I'm hungry as if I'm going to eat all this food, but I can unless I get the exercise. So I'm like, shit, now I got to walk deeper into the night. I got to walk longer. I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. I could have been walking throughout the day. That many I was on social media. I could have just walked to one side of my house and back. Yeah, yeah. I could have even been on social media while doing it. Walked them back. That would add up to thousands of steps throughout the day where then I wouldn't have to spend more of my time later in the day after work to do it. And it's like, you can literally build your life and goals around what you're currently doing. And it, it's, it's easier than people think. It's just the expectations they set on their self that make it impossible. Right. I agree. 
it's yeah, I don't I don't want to say it's, it's like simple stuff, but I, no, it it, it it the the logic is simple, the result isn't because it takes right. you to do it over and over and over. If like you're saying in Minecraft, if you mine in a straight line at a certain level, you'd eventually hit diamond. Yeah. Let's say you did like one block an hour. Okay. Might not be a lot of diamond you're going to get eventually, but eventually, if you do it enough, you're going to hit that diamond. It's just if yeah. if you're five hours in, meaning five blocks, and you don't see diamond yet, and you decide to stop, doesn't mean that the diamond's not there. You just decided that it wasn't worth your time to go do it. Go find right. it. Concept, simple applicationism. Yep. Or even even then, no, no. I think it's more. It's more like. It's more like. I think simple and and difficulty or com- simplicity and difficulty are co- two co- completely different things. Something can be very very difficult to do, right? Like jumping out of an airplane with a with a with a parachute. That's difficult to do. It's simple. All you gotta do is jump. Make sure that you have your parachute on, right? But it is difficult to do because you have to mentally prepare yourself. I'm going to be free falling and something could go wrong. Yeah. And I could. Not. But it is relatively it's just, it's simple it's a simple simple concept put on the parachute jump out pull the string that's simple to do it is difficult to do because some i mean people just aren't willing to jump i'm not willing to jump out of a freaking airplane it's you know that's simple as well the concept is simple i, I was I'm not jumping yeah i was watching a video today that was a dude who took uh he, he's a guy of faith and he took a month off of the internet so he had yeah. his like wife and friend take his phone and computer he went to go stay with monks for like a week, but then the rest of the time he was home. And he's like, the only time I ever like used the device was I sent a couple text messages to friends to make sure stuff upload that he had preset to like his YouTube and stuff. So I wouldn't go the whole month without like activity on his channel. But he said, he's like, you, you, everyone, the hardest thing is escaping your, like everyone wants to escape the reality. So that's why it's easy to go on social media when you're in the middle of the work days because everyone wants to evade what they're currently doing. If it's hard, if it's stressful, you want to look away. He's like, when he got stressed of not having social interaction, when his only social interaction was sending a text, he found himself sending more texts. He's like, okay, I can't even do this. So he had like family take his phone away. And then what he said in terms of his faith, he's like, when, when I was doing this whole thing, I realized that faith is really simple, but the execution isn't. He said, he's like, think about it. It's by the grace of God that you're saved. And all you got to do is believe that. But a lot of us, like through the practices of trying to achieve that, however we see fit, or through like what other people expect us to do, we put on so much pressure ourselves. Oh, that person prays five times a day. That person, they went to church every single day. That person, they look and post on social media like they're the most perfect person in the world. Why aren't I doing that? And it's like, it's the pressure people put on themselves that drives me crazy. Sin, what's up, buddy? Bro, can you just run through the BPM method quick? Yes, man. I will run through it real quick for you, man. Thank you for coming by. So, I don't know how exactly this is going to work in FIFA 21 um, with them not having fitness cards, but I'll explain it very simply now. There's many sort of cards, like this one, that sell for a lot of coins in FIFA Ultimate Team. Um, that are bronze players due to league SVCs. So we have the French League right here. We have the um, Connabel and Sudamericana cards. So those sell. Yeah, fitness cards that go for 200 coins. All these are items that will help you in FIFA Ultimate Team. And thank you for the subscription, buddy. Welcome to the Elite Army. So I'm going to open a bronze pack real quick and kind of show you how it works. So it's 400 coins. And you can't just do this with just 400 coins. You need a little bit more than that. Because it's the process of you doing it and listing stuff over time that's going to get you more coins. But I'll break it down very simply off of this. So you open this. This is a perfect pack to explain it. Maybe not. Nah, it looks like we only have one player. But this guy, center back. He, I, we know he's going to sell because he's a Sudamericana card. League SVC. Let's see how much he's going for. 1,000 cards alone this guy goes for. So the pack was 400. We can sell him for up to 1,000. These rest of these guys, they will have a purpose for us. I'll explain that in a second. But that pack alone, we made coins on. You just do it enough, so you just slowly open bronze packs over time, and you'll be able to not only make coins, but store cards in your club. Now, I'm going to explain, okay, you have 50K? Yeah, so this should work for you. 
Now I'm going to explain the next step of the process. And this is what could make you more coins or get you the cards that you want. So here's another example. We have two guys in League SBCs, League MX, and then we got the Spanish League. So I'm going to do this guy first. Let's see how much he goes for. Okay, we can sell for 600 coins. Already made more than the pack costs if he sells for that price, which they don't always do, but there's a high likelihood they do. Look at this guy, 900 coins. I'm going to put him up for 700, but we have a filled transfer list right now, so I'm not going to do that. Um, the rest of these cards we're going to send to our club because they will have a purpose. If you're wondering what cards I choose to leave in my clubs and which ones I don't, I'll explain it very simply with uh, the available squad building challenges we have. If you go over squad building challenges and go to the players, you'll see that there's a lot of different, not only like player SBCs, but you'll see the league ones as well. So I want you to go through the leagues. You'll see that there's Pro League here. There's League MX. And scattered through this, there's many other ones. So once you look through and get familiar with what leagues are available, I want you to look to see what the reward is. So for League MX, if you complete all the teams in this, you get yourself a 90 rated team of the season card. So that means people are going to want to fill out these teams. You go in and you look. Every single team, Atlas, Americana, all these players, if you pack someone from this club, is going to have value and sell. Every single one of these teams. Because if people complete the team, they get a tradable pack. So by you opening bronze packs, you can choose to either sell them on to make money, or yourself, if you wanted to, you can choose to put them into here. A lot of these are bronze players that you can get through packing, but there's another thing that you can do as well, and that is upgrade SBCs. So right now, for the next, I would say, I think seven days, yep, yeah, seven days, we have upgrade SBCs out. These are always available in the upgrade packs area right here. They'll see bronze upgrade. What do you do? You exchange your unwanted bronze players, so 11 of them, and you get yourself a two silver player pack. It's untradeable, but you get two silver players, one rare, one non-rare, that you could potentially put into league SBCs or other SBCs. I'm going to make it easier for you. If you go to the live section, you're going to see that there's a, another bronze upgrade and another silver upgrade. These are boosted. They will give you an additional card. So instead of two, you're getting three. So I want you to go into bronze upgrade if you've been doing it for a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a league that I know doesn't have a league SVC. So we're going to go to the third English division. We got two cards here. We're going to go to the fourth. We have a lot more. So I'm going to put all these cards that are in the fourth division into the seam. You could try to sell these for 150, 200 coins. By all means, if you want to do that at the start, you can. I just choose not to because I don't want to fill up my transfer list. Um, but all these guys in my head, I'm not really going to use for anything else. So I'm going to use for a spec. Now we get three rare silver, not three rare silvers. We're going to get one rare and two non-rares. Now through the process of doing that, you then will get cards that you can use in League SVCs that are silver and some that you can't. You're going to do the same thing for silver upgrade then, where you're going to change um, 11 silver players that you get through doing that upgrade. You're going to get yourself four common gold rares. Now this is where it gets my fun part. If we go to the store, you'll see that I've made a couple already. So we have the silver ones, obviously. Um, we just finished with the non-rares, actually. Dang it. Uh, I'll explain it. So for the non-rares, we got a bunch of non-rare golds in my club. There's a league SBC up right now called 82 to 88. And all you need is seven golds. So by like kind of grinding this slowly over time, and I can link you a video or two of me explaining this all in a video. I've done it before. But if I go to the seam right here, what is it telling me? I can get an 82 rated gold to 88 rated gold by only using seven gold players in 45 cap. So in my head, I go, okay, I'm going to use the gold cards that are untradeable that I got from upgrades. So let me go through this. All these guys are untradeable that I have. I've done this enough. We're going to put a goalie in. I'm just going to start throwing random guys in because I have a lot of them. I'm going to put seven of these cards in. And then, since I have four left, I'm just going to use the bronzes that we packed that aren't tradable in the sense of like, I can't really sell them and make coins on them because they don't have a league SBC. 
Let's try to find one we can use. I'm pretty liquid at the moment, so it might be a little bit more difficult for me. Um, let's see if we can find one. RSL, here we go. So I'm going to put in four in here from this league to get some chem. Boom. Let's check. Uh, we don't have enough chem yet. We have 38. Can we get chem elsewhere? Looks like we can get a little there. Looks like we can get a little there. Trade him around. Maybe put him down there. Yep. Just want to kind of slowly work around until you find a way in. I'm going to see if we can find a striker, another CDM. I'm just going to go with this guy. Put him there. Boom. So we got 45 cam now. Now what this does is through just doing enough upgrades. Bro, I kind of really like your content. Hey, I appreciate that, man. We're going to grind hard for FIFA 21. So in the meantime, we're going to keep doing these. Again, the process of grinding. But if you want to stay around for FIFA 21, man, more than welcome to have you here, dude. Uh, but no, so it, it's just, if you grind enough, you can do this. And now I'm going to open this for you because sometimes you get a really good card. Sometimes you get an 88 rated. Sometimes you get an 82, right? You never know. I'm going to open it with you and see if it's worth it. Let's open it. This is through just doing bronze packs, by the way. Bronze packs and upgrades. We get a board guaranteed. We get a walkout. Brazil. CDM. You can't make this up. We just got an 88 rated team of the season. You just watched it live of us doing the grind. On the first one we did off of opening bronze packs. Yeah, he's untradeable. He's probably not going to fit my team. But it's the process of grinding it. They got us this card. Is that cool? Now, I'll tell you, this isn't luck. Yes, it's great that we got them. And maybe it is a little bit lucky. But we've gotten so many 88 rated, But we've also gotten so many 82 rated. Hypothetically, let's say he was an 82, okay? Let's say he's a crappy 82 that's untradeable. What the hell am I going to do with him, right? Well... This is where we go to our other squad building challenges. There's currently one going on right now. That's called the 82 plus. I'm going to explain what this is. That's kind of decent. Good player. Yeah, it's it's really good for the time put in. So for this team, let me get this straight. If you make an 82 overall team, 40 chem, you will get, I think it's what, five cards that are 82 plus rated. Anything over, no cap. So what I'm going to do, let's do it right now. I'm going to use the cards we have in our club. We're going to try to get this to work. We don't need a crazy amount of cam. I'm actually going to use the card we just packed too. Because I want to see what that brings us to. We're just going to fill the rest with, not low rated golds, but we're going to go to the gold commons and see if we can get any high rated. Oh, there we go. These non-rare upgrades we did. We got some good ratings here. Let's see if that's enough or if we need to change anything. Okay, so that's an 83. We don't necessarily need that much. If we take them out. Put in 80 rated. Does that get us the rating? 82. Boom. So now I'm going to take a second to see if we can get even more out of this. Because I don't want to waste an 85 if I don't need to. We're going to take out the 85 and see if we put in an 80 goalkeeper. What does that do? Gets us an 82 rating. Okay. Can we get rid of an 84 now? I tell myself by putting in an 80. Oops. Not there. Common bro pack, sound good? Okay, so there's a limit. We can't put in 80 for an 84. I'm going to try for an 83. Okay, we can do it for an 83. And that gets us Ken. Now I want to try my luck with 82s. Can I pull an 82 out with an 80? No, we can't. So that's where our luck ends. 
So this is the team I use. Four cards that we got from the upgrade 82 to 88. I know for a fact. And then the rest that we got from just bronze packs upgrading them to non-rare golds. We're going to now get five 82 plus rated. Let's open it up and see what we get. Um, Simp, I want you to take a guess, man. What's the highest rated card you're going to think we're going to get out of this? They're all going to be guaranteed over 82. But there's unlimited potential. It can be a 99. What do you think we're going to get? Some packs, I'll admit, I've done like five of these. The first one I did, the best card we got was an 83. Most were 82s. The next one I did, I got a 94 rated card. Bro, you got this pack of 90 plus? We'll see. Let's see. It's all part of the gamble, man. It's not really a gamble. If you do the bronze packs, you're making coins. All right. Team of Season Walkout. Argentina. No way. Oh, I thought that was messy. There you go, man. So, not only do we get a 94, we can get another 94, potentially. All right? We can get another 94, potentially. Or a bunch of 90s. We don't know. Let's see what else we got. Is that cool? This is just from Bronze Packs, bro. This is literally just from Bronze Packs. We've been doing this. Ready? What else? Okay. Everything else low, but look. Boom. But you know what's cool? This one card. He's not really usable for me. I wouldn't really use him personally. He has good stats, so don't get me wrong. He's just not going to fit into any of my teams. If I wanted to put these 82s and these 83s, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. Four cards that we could put back in that 82 plus pack. And then use our other cards that we had into another one. And you can literally do this unlimited times, man. And the reason I'm telling you you can do it unlimited times. Um, that's so sick. You only did <laughs> 82 plus. It really fits in my team because I have Vernon, my best player. And then the rest are doo-doo. Yeah, man. Like, but like, the cool thing is, I'll explain this again in another way. I will put this plain and simple. If you wanted to make coins, you could sit here. Don't even do, you don't even need to do any of the upgrade packs. If you wanted to make coins, you could sit here, open a 400 coin pack, and most packs make profit by listing the fitness cards up for 200. If you get a squad fitness, listing it for 1,000. Um, look at that. Three SBC cards and a bronze fitness. So these will sell over time. They don't always sell. I'll tell you at the beginning of FIFA 21. Um, well, the beginning of FIFA, since a lot of people are doing this, it's a little harder to get them to sell, but they sell over time. FIFA 21 is not going to have those, but they'll have these player cards. Let, let's see off of this back how many coins we made. Okay, we can list them for 600. 400, so that's 1,000 coins. 400 for that, 1,400, and that 1,600. That's four times the amount of coins. 1,600 coins. That's four times the amount of coins it took to open the pack. Yeah, and like, the thing I said, if you don't want to take, it's all about the amount of time you want to put in. If you just want to do this to get coins and do nothing else, you can sit here until you have enough coins to buy your favorite player off the market, put into your team to make it better. And or, and the reason that I say and or, because I do both, I sit here and do this, but at the same time I make the upgrade packs, so the chance we pack Messi, you know, could happen. I'm not saying I pack Messi because I haven't this year, but let me show you my team currently. I packed her Stegen. Um, I did the SBC for these guys. I did the objective for this guy. I did SBC for Dembele. I bought Neymar. I bought Mbappe. I bought Ronaldinho. I bought Lala. I bought Varane. But we packed Son. We packed Hazard. And if you look through my club, I'll show you like everyone I have. I'll go through right now. All these are just the, the contracts on them, so they're not actually players I own. But look, Oblak, Hummels, who else? Kostic, Shakur, Summer, Paris Sage, Havertz, Carvajal, Salvio. All these guys I would never... I, I wish I could give you most of these guys if you're saying you want to improve your team. I wish I could just send you these guys. Diego Carlos, Asmin, Maha, Dybala. 
Look at all these 90 plus rated that never fit my team. You got the same one? Nice. Spranio, Nani. Like, look at all these cards. I, I'm not even putting these guys into SBCs. 89 ring. I packed this Mbappe. He's first owner. First owner Mbappe. Slamini. It's the thing that makes FIFA fun. I'll admit. The thing that makes FIFA fun for me is wanting to pack something and not getting them because it makes me want to grind harder. I gotta go. I got family in town. Reed, I'll take. Uh, I'll catch you later, buddy. All right, see you, man. Yeah, take it easy. But yeah, if Sam, if you wanna do that, man, hundred percent, start getting on that grind. I'm gonna play a game right now. I don't know when I'm gonna end the stream, but I feel like playing a game. So we're we're gonna go live for a bit, playing this game. Bro, why don't you do icon moments packs? See, I would. One, one, I really don't care. That's why I don't do it. Um, because I know a lot of the times I'd get crap. Um, but two, I love every single player I have in my squad. So in my head, there's no reason for me to do it. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Like, yeah, we could pack a uh, Brazilian Ronaldo, and that'd be an upgrade for part of my team. But like. I want Mbappe in there because he's one of my favorite players. Neymar is one of my favorite players. Ronaldinho is one of my favorite players all time. Lala fits him well. Veron's a killer center back. I have Militao and Tradable. Fits perfectly with Ter Stegen, the best goalkeeper in the game. This Allen does a really amazing job in the midfield. This many cards, super fun to use. This Vinicius is two. And then this Dembele is 5-5. Five, five, just amazing. I don't care what you're doing. You're just a good streamer, bro. Hey, I appreciate it. If you guys are new to the channel, like I always say, feel free to subscribe. You don't need to. Um, but if you guys do want to see future content, uh, feel free to do so. I will tell you, Simph, if you check the channel out a little bit more, bro, I have a bunch of playlists on the channel, whether it's cheapest solutions for some of these SBC cards or it's trading tips, bronze pack method. Just look through those playlists and you'll have hundreds of videos you can watch. Um, my goal for FIFA 21 is to have at least 100 FIFA 21 videos. Just keep that in mind. 365 days typically is a year. Yeah, it's a year. But like till you get a new FIFA from launch, it's maybe a little less, a little more depending on the release date. But my goal is to have 100 videos. So that's one every three days, maybe a couple in a day, maybe a week off here or there, but we're, we're going to grind hard. Uh, we also do live streams on Twitch as well. We're not only just on YouTube. We're on YouTube for the moment. But if you guys did want to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash mumble elite. Link should be down below, but I don't know if it is right now because YouTube really messed up with the stream today. I didn't even, I streamed for like a half an hour to no one because YouTube didn't know I was live. It, it was weird. Then I ended the stream, started a different one and it worked. Yeah, like look at these teams you come up against nowadays. They're crazy, man. But yeah, appreciate the support, guys. And if you can, smack the like button. We had a like goal of yesterday of five. Currently hit that, and our goal is to go up one like a day since we're back to YouTube streaming. If you want to hit that like, get it to six. That'd make my day. You made me shit a lot of coins. Thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate it. Yeah. And guys, these tips, some of them I'll admit. Bronze back method, it's very grindy in terms of, yeah, you can make a lot of coins off of it, but you got to open a lot of bronze packs. That's kind of like anything in life, man. I'm, I'm showing you the easiest way to make coins in the sense of, like, it's very easy to understand. You don't need to have market knowledge. You literally just need to open bronze packs and know it sells over time. That's fine. But, like, if you, if I show you that, and then you can understand how to make upgrade packs, you can pack a crap ton of stuff. And you'll see in FIFA 21 what I end up doing. Uh, my plan right now is to do an RTG. So, content for FIFA 21 will be follows. We'll do cheapest solution videos. We'll do trading videos. But we'll do live streamed RTGs. So, I will have an RTG. It won't be first owner. I typically do first owner. We'll try to complete each league first owner at some point as like an objective, but we don't need to stick that. We're going to have players that leave off the market. 
But I'm going to have those videos in the meantime. And then maybe not every single day, but a couple times at least per week. We'll go live for like an hour or two. We'll make an RTG in video format in the sense of like we'll go live, talk about what we're doing, lay it out. I'll do a little bit of trading live. I'll open some packs live for you guys. We'll play a couple games and then we'll end it. Um, just kind of showing you guys the process all together of the grind I do. Sorry, bro. My mom was just speaking. No problem, man. Welcome back. And the referee looks to his assistant who's got the flag up. It's offside. Allen. Neymar. Lala. This does look promising. Here they are still probing away. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh! Testing Almost made it all the way. Great reach, great reach. I'm trying to get better at the skill moves. Side. That's something I want to not perfect off. in um, FIFA 21, but I definitely want to improve from where I'm currently at. Bro, you can win? I, I, I can. I don't care if I do. I'm kind of half reading chat, half looking around. Neymar. If I sit here and just shove it down the middle, I think I could beat this guy, no problem. But I'm going to try to do some skill moves. Work it up a little bit. Okay. Mbappe, his birthday card is 5-star, five 5-star. Five I keep forgetting that, so I need to try to do some scoop turns with him. Good save. Good save, mate. Um... Sam, are you getting Roberto FIFA 21 Bruno. at the start, man? Should be. Still a chance in there off the goalkeeper. And it's Ronaldinho again. Oh, shit. I should have forced that. By anticipating the pass. Dembele. A great chance to go in front. Let's go. Oh, he's offsides. No. <laughs> Offside. Well, the lad took it well, but quite rightly, the linesman's flag goes up. That was close. I thought he kept them on. For us, Alan, I think. Well, looking at the goal score, he was oh, convinced he timed his run, but looking at it, that's a great I should have just took the, the shot of Dembele. It's with De Bruyne. After the game, can you show us some more methods? Yeah, man. I'll, I'll kind of show you. You're talking trading methods, right? If you're talking trading methods, I'll show you the couple I've been using. Um. But I'll also kind of show you my logic behind it. Because if I just show you a trading method, uh, it might help you. But if you don't understand, like, what I'm doing, it's not going to be that helpful if that makes any sense whatsoever. Because, like, what, I, what I'm showing you might change tomorrow. But I'll show you why it's working right now and how you can get it to work for other methods. Good vision. Let's go, baby. Neymar. Goal. Lasso, baby. Oh, bit of quality showed there. An accurate side yeah, I can't wait to have a team with. Mbappe and Neymar, not at the start of the game, but I'm definitely going to build a, definitely a league on sided squad, more probably French heavy than anything. Maybe go French nationality and then try to get some sort of hybrid foreman. But I'm excited to hit the ground running hard. Yeah, I'm hoping they bring back tournaments though. I'd love to play some FIFA tournaments. Get like a bronze team and just mess around. Neymar. He's got some room out there. Good support running on either side. Beautiful work on the ball. Players arriving in the middle. Well, crossing is a skill, and that's not a very good example of it. They've spoiled the promise of uh, Sim, for any. Is the bronze pack working for you yet, man? Good work, really. So Are things really selling? Because you said you had like 50k coins, right? Griezmann. Now De Bruyne. Matuidi. 
Sadio Mane. Neymar. Well, the ref's getting slaughtered by those fans who were convinced it should have been a pen. Mendy. Here's Eder Militao. Ball played to Mendy. Paul, thank you. Referee has blown and he's given the free kick. Oh gosh. No. He's given the ball away here unnecessarily. Good defense, Ronaldinho. Matuidi. Now Sadio Mane. Oh, that's a lockdown gear right there. Now De Bruyne. It's Make him force a pass. Come on. Yeah, buddy. The direction of the pass and was able to intervene. Oh, then I force one right back. Rip. Dalglish. Slip past his marker. That's the way it works in FIFA. Alright, GG half time. Dennis, how's it going, homie? Welcome to the stream. Alan Smith, what about Neymar How's your in day? first half? Yeah, I thought he looked lively in that first half. Really sharp. Again, guys, we will get back to Brown Spec Method and some trading tips after this game. Um, but after I show you guys some more tips, we're probably going to end the stream. We'll kind of see. We'll see what the time's like. It's already 5.11, so I probably have to go soon. Oh, yes, let's go. Fancy with it? I should have did, like, the Rabona. Ronaldinho to take the corner. Neymar. Allen. Bellon Mendy. Now, can he take them on? Dembele. Neymar. Successful tackle. Bell on Mendy. Got a bit of pressure on. It's what we all want to see. The referee's playing advantage. He's done it well here. Well, he's got away from him. Dembele. That's cut out. Space to try and hit it now. Oh, foul. But he's been fine. How's yours? Fantastic, dude. Working from home, so clocked in my eight hours. Second my day ended. Booted up a FIFA stream. Can't get any better than that, right? Good save. Am I only up one? Why does it feel like I'm up more? Maldini's been shocking. Dude, I hope to pack an icon. FIFA 21, man. If there's one thing I wanted, this is a pack an icon in FIFA 20, and I didn't. I have quite a few icons that I've gone through, like the upgrade stuff, the, the SBCs, and the like the objectives. But in terms of an actual packed icon, the only time I ever packed an icon, I think, was FIFA 18, when I played like twice, and then. <laughs> Played the game later in the year, and it gave me an icon on my first gold pack I opened. It was crazy. FIFA 20, I've opened literally thousands, like thousands upon thousands of gold packs, ranging from like rare golds um, to just common gold packs. To literally anything you could think of. Lovely ball from Neymar. It was a promising situation. They could have made more of that. Griezmann. The meta in FIFA's His pace. Skill. It's also, well, it used to be. I don't know what it is anymore. It used to be like drag backs too. So you're seeing like the move I'm doing is like when I get into space, kind of doing that drag back move. I don't think it's working as much anymore. 
I think it's worth dribbling now and just kind of getting the ball the the outside and cutting back in. Roberto Firmino. It's De Bruyne. Yeah, pay, pace works in every game. Onto Dalglish. Bro, what? If he scores on this, oh my gosh, I thought he was going to get a shot off there. I would have been so frustrated. All right, let's actually try to build something up. And that's to be expected when you've been, they see, has denied a penalty. Oh, Ronaldinho, what touch was that, bro? Yeah, I know what you mean. He's got support with it. Just stole it away in the end. The goal you ever have those games, too, where it feels like nothing goes your way? Like, you, you might have all the possession. You might have, like, all the shots. But nothing's going in. And then, like, the 90th minute, he gets one shot and goes in. Got the ball and they go you ever feel that way? With speed. Break still on. Looking for goal now. Can't hang onto it. The keeper. <laughs> the post. It's still alive. Come on. All right. Let's make some subs. Dembele, great shift, man. We're going to bring in Ibra. We're going to bring in Son. Should we put Neymar wide? We'll put Di Maria wide. We'll take Neymar off. Put Son at Cam. There we go. I love this Di Maria. I want to see how well he performs because I haven't used him in a bit. Two eager. He's caught offside here. Was that offsides there on the rebound? Yeah, it must have been. Be Especially in champs from the goalkeeper. Dude, I feel that, man. Champs is a whole other level. It's like every game's a sweat fest. Champs is the one game mode where it's like the first like couple weeks of the game, you en you're enjoying playing FIFA as a whole, so you enjoy champs. Maybe not as much as, like, division rivals, but it's still fun. But then it gets to a point where, you like, I remember, like, I think three quarters of the way through uh, FIFA. I'm grinding champs. I'm like, dude, I don't even care what I get in a pack. Why, why am I putting myself through this hell? Oh, Ibra, you're in, mate. No! Counting down. The end I should have just did like a rainbow flick to myself oh, and volleyed that. Keep an eye on the watch because we haven't got that long to go. And the team know that. Great pressure. They can't get too desperate, though. They need to keep some sort of poise about their play. Yeah, they've got to keep the shape. I mean, it's not time to further center half and the goalkeeper forward yet, but we're approaching that He's trying to force him into a pass right now. Because he's running out of time. If he can pull too many men forward, that can read a pass. Oh! All right, call him out, call him out. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Well, suddenly they could be on the counter attack. <laughs> Should I be an asshole? <laughs> Crowd uh, may be expected a bit more, but it's two added minutes. <laughs> I really don't want to be this guy. <laughs> safe to play it back to oh the i'm Good sorry chat start. i'm sorry <laughs> he's drifted out really in the clear now in on goal Ooh. let's go i used a bronze goalkeeper goal. once and he saved every shot dude that's dedication got the victory in a match that was very close it could easily have been a defeat well so evenly matched and the winners as a result i think will g g man Mbappe. Stat-wise, I blew this guy out of the water, it feels like. Yeah, I won't really show it there, but you kind of saw the pace of the game. Ooh. All right. Dennis, what kind of training tip should I show you and everyone else, bud? Let's think. Let's take a look. So, we, we've done bronze pack method. I've obviously showed you. Let, let's see what else is sold off. Because we started at around... 900k we've we've stored quite a few cards um and quite a few haven't sold yet but let's look through 
1,400 for this guy. 250, 2,200, 600, 600, 150, 300, 400, 200, 300, 300, 250, 350, 450, 200, 1,000, 200 for each of these. So obviously things are selling and it's working. Um, so if you guys want to keep doing Brian's back method, I recommend you do so. Um, a lot of these guys, I'm just keep realisting until they sell. It's just that simple. Let's do. I have a glitch right now. I don't know if this ever happens to you guys in any FIFAs, but I have these cards stuck in my transfer list. It won't let me get rid of them. It says I won them, but it won't let me access them, which really pisses me off because I can only bid on 14 cards now. Bronze sell for 2K. Some do. Some sell for 10K, man. Depends on the card. A lot of them were League SBC cards that have that price tag on them. But I'm going to show you, speaking about League SBCs, I'm going to work you through a trading method right now. So, Synth, Den, if you guys want to pay attention, by all means, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through the process. So, in my head, I'm thinking, if people are still playing this game and they're trying to get tradable packs, what's a good way to do so? So, I think League SBCs. Now, for gold cards, there's a lot of things inflating gold cards right now, so I'm not going to use them, but I'm going to use silver. This is a perfect example. With silver and bronzes, you can complete the League MX very easily. This is your reward. 90 rated card, which people can put into other squad building challenges, meaning a lot of people are still going to do this. So you got to look at the certain packs you can get. Small gold players pack, jump up premium silver, small prime electrum, a bunch of relatively decent packs for the amount of coins it would cost you to straight out buy these teams. Um, but I'm going to show you a workaround of how you can not only do it yourself, but make coins on it. This is what I did earlier on in FIFA. I did silver common. I would go to the league. So we're going to go silver common, league MX. And we're going to look for the lowest buy now. So currently, cards are listing in the absolute last minute. So... 50th minute slash third hour or whatever you want to call it right away they're selling for 200 coins if we put that to 250 we can see it's still the same way 300 okay 300 where it drops off a little bit so within 15 minutes every single non-rare silver will sell for 300 coins so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bid 150 I'll bid 200 on this guy just because why not? But basically what I'm going to do is bid for 150 and sell for 300 minimum and you double your coins. So right now it might be a difficult time because not as many people have transfers up. I know for like people overseas, I'm in the United States, so it's early evening, but I know I'm like in the UK, it's relatively late or early for you guys. So what you want to do is just bid on those cards. It works for any of these smaller leagues that have league SBCs. You can do it for MLS. You can do it for the Pro League. Um, but basically, if you win a card, which hopefully it shows me winning cards. Let, 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 me, let me look in my club to see what I have already. I would have never thought of this. Yeah, so and the reason why it's hard to just kind of... It, it's the logic you got to think about rather than the trading method itself. Because like, if you would have thought to yourself, why? I get the question all the time, why trade with silvers? Like, it, it's hard to understand why someone would put a silver into their squad. That's why people buy cards off the market, right? No, but if they need them for something else, that would make sense. So, for example, this guy, we bought for 200 coins. He's in the League MX. 72 rated. CM. How much is he going for? We can sell this guy for 600 coins. And he should sell within the hour. That tripled the amount of coins we spent on him some argentinas there's an mls guy right here bid 150 on this guy at some point i can sell him for a thousand coins and the thing is you might be saying oh how do you know which ones go for a lot of coins how which ones don't don't worry about that you just want to bid on a majority of them the rule of thumb goalkeepers are typically going to be the cheapest in terms of you're not going to make as much coins off the goalkeepers but as a whole, defenders, center backs go for a lot more. Um, certain positions on teams. So, like, let's say it's... 
how do I put it? One team might have four in the back, meaning there's a right back. Other teams might only have center backs, meaning they don't need a right back. Um, some of these guys, you can put them into other SBCs. Like, I'll show you right now. Argentinian players, they go up in coins because there's a different squad building challenge for them. It, it's not genius, man. I've just played enough FIFA and, like, done this enough where I understand it all. I had no idea when I first thought of it. Um, in my FIFA, my strikers miss simple chances and complicated chances. They always score, dude. It's always that way, man. Um, let's see if we can find the one I'm looking for. I don't like that they added player SBCs to league SBCs, but so we're going to go, I think it's Libertados. We'll save both of these and take a look. But so here's a league SBC. That if we take a look at some of the teams, there are certain requirements. So this one, you need Argentina players, minimum of six. Five of them have to be rare, and you have to have a minimum 78 rated team. So, like, a lot of high rated silver cards, like 72 rated, could float in this team. If you're using, like, 80 rated Argentina players throughout, that will go up in price. You can get a rare election players pack from that. Pseudo Americana, same kind of thing. If you go through this, you're going to see things like Colombian and Chile. These, for bronze players, if you get some bronze Colombian players and Chile players in bronze pack method, see if they're selling for anything. If you list them for 200, chances are they're going to sell over time. But like, look, you need five minimum players, rare players are minimum of six, and you need 95 cap. So look into there, see what positions they have. Looks like you have a right back and left back for sure. Meaning right backs and left backs that are Colombian might sell. And the reason I say might is there's obviously a lot on the market, especially with bronze packs. So maybe not a lot of them sell, but maybe certain ones do. So we're going to look at this guy that we have, see if he sells. He probably will go for 200. Yeah. So we can list this guy right now for 300 coins. He'd most likely sell. Let's take a look at the Chilean players as well. See if this works for that. Do you think this will still work for FIFA 21? This will, yes. Um, will it work exactly like this? No, because I don't know if they're going to have this exact league SBC, but the logic will work. Um, now, what I said before to Sim, before you got here, is in FIFA 21, I believe they confirmed that there's going to be no fitness cards. So what that means is in the bronze pack method, you're no longer going to be able to get bronze fitness cards because there's going to be no fitness. You're not going to be able to get squad fitnesses. The reason why this is important is bronze fitness cards sell for 150, 200 coins. Most bronze squad fitnesses sell for a thousand plus, especially at the beginning of FIFA. They're selling for almost 1,500 coins. That gets you a lot of profit when it comes to opening a crap set of bronze packs. But what that means is if they're not going to have that card in there, there's a potential you could get another player in the pack. Meaning maybe you get another player that's in a league SBC, which goes for 2,000 coins. You never know. That's why we kind of have to wait till it happens. But I guarantee you they have league SBCs in FIFA 21. So the logic's still going to be there. And what I like to do, you know when I was bidding on cards before? What I would do is I would do the league SBC and sell them the duplicates. So let's, let's say I'm chilling watching Netflix. I would sit here and I would go, okay, I want to do, let's say I want to do the Sudamericana SVC, right? So I would go, all right, we're going to go to Sudamericana cards. We're going to see the lowest buy now. This one's a bad example because a lot of them don't work for that. We're going to do the Libertados because this one's a little bit more expensive. So it looks like you can sell most cards that aren't a goalkeeper. For 200 plus coins. So I would sit here and I'd watch Netflix and I would just bid 150 on a bunch of cards that aren't goalkeepers. And I would do this for like an hour when I'm watching a movie. And every card that I win, I would store in my club, store in my club, store in my club, store in my club. And then the ones that are duplicates, I would sell on for like double the price, triple the price. So I'd be making coins, but also at the same time, I could complete the SBC myself and open packs. 
So you'll see that a lot of my live streams in FIFA 21. You'll see that a lot of my trading tip videos. You'll see that kind of logic. But in terms of how to incorporate it and make it work, um, you'll kind of have to wait to see specifically how we do it there. But again, bronze upgrades, the silver upgrades, to then the 82 upgrade packs, to then the 82 pluses, got us that 94 rated team of the season. So I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. If you could do me a favor, if you guys are new and enjoyed, feel free to subscribe, obviously. Um, but if you could do me a favor and smack that like button, not only does it help the channel get seen more, um, the interaction is really important to me in terms of seeing what you guys are liking, what you're disliking. Feel free to dislike a video too. If, if you didn't like a video, let's say I did a, here's a perfect example. Let's say I did a cheapest solutions and the SBC that I told you to do at the time was like, let's say 30,000 coins. And by the time you did it, it's up to like 35,000 coins. You might be pissed if you only had 30K and now you can't complete it. If you wanted to leave a dislike on the video and say, hey, Mumbo, like the hell, man, you said it was 30K. Why is it 35K now? I would more than likely tell you, hey, man, I say it's around this price because prices can go up or down. But if you want me to be more specific, I can link you the solution before you do it just so you know, hey, it's currently going for this price. But yeah, um, last thing I'll say before I go, and I really do appreciate your guys' support. Um, yeah, no problem, Mendes. I'll be back tomorrow too, right after work, um, 3.30 Central Time. So whatever time it is for you now, two hours ago is when I started streaming. So whatever's two hours back from now is when I'm going to be live tomorrow. Um, but last thing I say, going to FIFA 21, I'm going to keep doing the same thing I'll be doing for FIFA 21. The rest of FIFA 20, I'll keep doing squad building challenges for you guys. I'll keep doing shorter slash hour to hour streams of this. Me playing a couple games, trading, doing bronze back method, showing you kind of the format we're going to do leading into the RTG of FIFA 21. Also, we'll be doing trading methods, posting those. Um, and as always, if you want to follow my social medias, we do stream on Twitch. Feel free to check the Twitch out. But if you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see in FIFA 21, I'm looking to make a lot of content. So if you want to see something specific, let me know. I'm more than willing to try to make content you guys want to see. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, Dennis. Thank you for stopping by, man. Last thing I'll say, and I said last thing like 10 times, but I have playlists on my channel, trading tips, bronze pack method, um, streams, SBCs. If you want to check those out, man, millions and millions, millions of minutes of content on the channel. Maybe not millions. Lots of hours of content on the channel. I'll just say that that you can check out. But yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Thank you for stopping by. Peace.